Australia doesn't have a federal anti-corruption body. Most people think we should have one. After all, we want to reduce corruption, right? What I didn't expect was the amount of deception, confusion and delay for something that should be straightforward to implement. So what's really going on? No, we don't support a National Integrity Commission. I don't think it's necessary and, uh, and, uh, and certainly we've got other things that we're concentrating on at the moment and that's not one of them right at this, front, right at this point in time. I'm not going to take lectures from the Labor Party about anti-corruption, Mr Speaker. They'd be very well aware of the matters in Victoria at the moment, Mr Speaker, the matters in Queensland at the moment, Mr Speaker. I would have thought that the Labor Party, Mr Speaker, would not be coming in here today when integrity issues and in the lack of integrity being displayed by their colleagues, Mr Speaker. But the gold standard, Mr Speaker, when it comes to corruption was the Labor Party in New South Wales, Mr Speaker, where, where they have so many ex-Labor ministers in prison, Mr Speaker, they could start a branch of the Labor Party in the Silverwater prison. This is the confusing thing. On one hand, the Liberal National Party laugh about all the corruption exposed by state anti-corruption bodies, like it's some kind of stand-up comedy routine. But then they don't want the model at the federal level. The reality is that the Liberals and Nationals are doing everything they can to avoid having a federal anti-corruption body. And if the pressure gets too much and they're forced into having one, then they want it done their way. Spoiler alert, their way is a weak and ineffective model that protects politicians. But let's take a step back. The Australian government likes to remind us that Australia ranks as one of the least corrupt nations in the world, a measurement reported on by Transparency International. But when you actually click the link and have a look at the rankings, there is a worrying trend. Australia's Corruption Perceptions Index is getting worse. In 2012, Australia ranked seventh in the world, with only a handful of countries deemed less corrupt than us. In 2021, we ranked 18th in the world, a massive drop. For comparison, in 2012, New Zealand was equal first in the world, as the least corrupt country. In 2021, it remained first in the world. The reason tackling corruption is so important is because the government spends billions of our tax dollars and makes life-changing policy decisions. Making sure there is integrity in our system is important to make sure decisions made are actually in our interests. But tackling corruption isn't easy. This quote from an article by the Australia Institute sums it up really well. Corruption is, by its nature, secretive. Without investigation, it flourishes and eats away at the public interest like termites through the timber framing of a house. That's why specialist bodies are required to uncover corruption. The good news is that every single state and territory in Australia has these specialist anti-corruption bodies. Probably the most publicised of these has been the New South Wales Independent Commission Against Corruption, or ICAC, which over its history has brought down politicians from both the New South Wales Liberal and Labour parties, some of who are now in jail. For example, there was the investigation into Eddie Obeid and Ian MacDonald, who were Labour Party politicians in the New South Wales Parliament in the late 90s and early 2000s. A conspiracy was formed between them to grant coal exploration licenses over farmland owned by Eddie Obeid and provide confidential information to allow business deals with mining companies worth $100 million to the family. Both of them are now in jail. Then there was Operation Spicer. One part of this investigation looked into secret illegal donations made by property developers to Liberal Party politicians. At least nine of them were implicated and resigned. Here's one of the property developers who was giving out envelopes of cash, Jeff McCloy, who also happened to be the mayor of a local council. Definitely no conflicts there. Anyway, you might be wondering, that's a pretty random photo of Jeff, but that's his birthday cake. If you can't see it clearly, here's another photo. It's literally a paper bag with cash spilling out of it. I haven't made this up, this is 100% real. Safe to say, this investigation caused a massive clean-out of politicians from Parliament. But obviously, corruption doesn't only exist at a state level. The problem is that the state anti-corruption bodies don't cover federal politicians or federal departments. Yet there is no anti-corruption body at a federal level. Instead, there's a scattered bunch of agencies which look at different things. For example, there's the Australian Commission for Law Enforcement Integrity, or ACLI, which looks at corruption within law enforcement bodies like the Australian Federal Police or the Border Force. 
But this body does not look at politicians or bureaucrats. Then you have the audit office, which can investigate matters when the numbers or processes don't add up. But again, they don't investigate corruption. In recent years, pressure has been building on the federal government to introduce a federal version of the Independent Commission Against Corruption. That's what federal ICAC refers to, although the actual name of the body varies depending on whose proposal you talk about. But I'll keep referring to a federal ICAC to keep things simple. We need to be fair about the history of this. Both the Liberals and Labor didn't consider a federal ICAC to be a priority or even necessary for a long time. Only the Greens and some independents have been trying to introduce one for ages. But everything changed in 2018 when Bill Shorten, then the Labour opposition leader, announced that if Labour won the next election, they would introduce a federal ICAC. That's why if I'm elected Prime Minister, my government will create a National Integrity Commission. A federal body monitored on the lessons of the state anti-corruption bodies. The National Integrity Commission will resolve the gaps and inconsistencies in the current system, designed to ensure the highest standards in public administration. We want to get it underway within our first year of government. And if the Liberals and Nationals want to work with us to get it done sooner, be my guest. But the Liberal government still didn't want to commit to anything. In May 2018, Christian Porter, then the Attorney General of Australia, said the government didn't think there was persuasive evidence that the current approach to corruption was deficient. In other words, there was no need for a federal ICAC. Later in that year, the pressure went up even more. In November of 2018, 34 former judges wrote an open letter to Scott Morrison, urging him to establish an effective anti-corruption body, which they said was critical in restoring trust in our democracy. That same month, Cathy McGowan, an independent politician, introduced her bill for an anti-corruption body to Parliament. The bill will establish the National Australian National Integrity Commission as an independent, broad-based, public sector anti-corruption commission for the Commonwealth. All this pressure seemed to finally work. About two weeks later, the government all of a sudden announced that they were working on implementing what they would call the Commonwealth Integrity Commission. This is a real proposal with real resources, real teeth, but one that I think protects our Commonwealth public administration. We have been working on it since January. They're just the facts, and Australians, I think, can probably see from the detail of our response today that this has not been done in a hurry. This has been done after long and careful consideration. It's interesting that he stresses that they have been working on this since January, which is about a year before this announcement. Especially given only a few weeks before, Scott Morrison had said that the coalition was still considering its position on whether to create one, and called an integrity commission a fringe issue. Mr Speaker, the government is considering its position through a normal cabinet process. When it comes to these issues... While the Leader of the Opposition is off on some sort of fringe issue, Mr Speaker. And a month before the announcement, the Deputy Prime Minister at the time, Michael McCormack, had said that there was no need for an Integrity Commission. People are also concerned about misbehaviour and corruption of officials federally. Well, is, is, is a body like that a good thing? Well, I, I don't believe so. I don't think it's necessary and, uh, and, uh, and certainly we've got other things that we're concentrating on at the moment and that's not one of them right at this, front, right at this point in time. But let's just go with their alternate reality that they were quietly working on one all along. At least they finally came around and announced it, right? Well, that was in 2018, and nothing has yet been introduced by the government into parliament. Not even for debate. And my next few videos will be exposing this whole saga. Thanks for watching. If you want to help me create more content like this, please consider checking out my Patreon page, link in the description below.